Hey, I'm Jonathan from Wiregrass Technologies. If you're part of the Friendliest Glowforge page, you've probably seen me in there helping somebody or talking to people fixing problems with their Glowforge. What people don't realize is we're also a ship-in repair facility, third-party part, third party repair facility for Glowforge. And we've also owned our machines since the Kickstarter. So when we're not running them, fixing somebody's, we're always working on or doing something with the Glowforges. So today what we're going to talk about is the high voltage red wire short and how to repair it. I've had a video out there saying we're gonna do this. We finally have had testing out and we've done it long enough to know that we have a repair. And we're gonna talk about that today. There are two different style lids. One uses just a piece of a flange basically with a hole in it. The other one uses an actual clip. These are harder to remove and these are easier. You can't tell which one you have. The majority have been the more difficult ones, go figure. So what we're gonna to do to remove them, when this slides down on here, this clip basically goes through here and locks it into place. So once you remove the screws, it's still held in here. You can't lift it up. So what we're going to do is you can get any kind of pry tool, flat tool, piece of metal, something that's not like a screwdriver because you can't get that in there. What you're going to do is you're going to try to get this in here and lift back on it and slide this down on the clip. Once you get this in between the clip and the lid, it's going to allow you to pick up on it just a little bit. Not much, but just a little. And you'll have to do it in three steps. You do this one first, you'll reach underneath, you'll pick up some, and you'll see it move. You go to the next one, pick up some, you'll do the same thing, and you'll do the last one. You'll pry in between it and pick up. Now, once you get all of them loose, it's not gonna pop right up. There's actually a piece of metal right here, and there is adhesive on the back side of this that also connects to that. So a lot of times you can either get the same pry tool, run it in between the metal and your lid to try to break the adhesive, or you can just wiggle upwards on it and it will come loose. So when you are trying to find these clips, all you have to do is reach your hand in here and feel for the tenfold circle and you'll know about where to go. Before you start prying on the lid though, there are three T10 screws you have to remove on the inside. Here's the first one towards the front of the machine. Then you slide the tube forward and there's two more in the back. And you have to remove all three of these on the lid before you can pry it up any at all. So here's our pry tool, and I can feel that right in here is where the tenfold is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the pry tool in, you push it inward, and then you kind of push it down and in. Now I've got it pulled back a little bit. What I'm gonna do is bump up on it, and I can feel it kind of move just a hair, and you can see there's a crack in there. It's not huge, but there's a little opening. So once I pull this loose, it should stay, and there it is. So I'll do the same thing. I'll feel for the tenfold. I'll come over here, go in between it, Wiggle it and lift up. There we go. You can see it move more. Now we've got the third one. So what you have to do is find the tin full, put the pry tool in there. I really need a stiffer pry tool. These are a little flimsy, but there you go. So I've got it in there. I'm gonna lift again and it pops up. Now it didn't come straight up. There's still adhesive over here. What I normally do is I'll just kind of hold it and support my thumb on the lid and just lift up and wiggle and there it went. So you gotta have to have the lid all the way open. But once you get that free, you can see where the adhesive was on this one. So just by wiggling it, it pops off. And that's how to remove the lid. That is the most foolproof way I've done it, or found to do it, and it doesn't even take the tin full off the inside, which that can cut you, so leaving it, you're better off. So this is our deconstructed test machine, Skeletor, as I have named it. And I'm gonna use this to show you how to do this. So the power supply mounts on this side of the machine and it actually runs the high voltage wire underneath the machine over here, then in the chain guide and over here too. So this is why it's so difficult to replace and the red wire is actually built into the power supply. So it's not something that comes out. So the first thing you have to do is check your red wire. This kit will only repair it if there's a short under the tube or in the chain guide. If the short is under the machine or closer to the power supply, it's not very easy to repair. These machines were built for compact and for enclosed and they were able to do that, but there's some sacrifices on the repairability side that make it a little more difficult. So to check it, there is a video that I'll link to this for just checking this red wire. But what you're gonna start by doing is you take off this side, of course, and you're gonna have to get this red plug off. So you just wiggle it 
and once you get it free a little bit, you're gonna run into the sidewall of the machine, which this one's missing. But there's a way to work around that. You put it in the middle, and you flex it out, and you get it as far as you can, and then you just kind of pull it to the side while I'm pushing the tube forward. When you do, this will slide right off. And once it's off, you can see where the red wire connects, and it just uses the same T10 torque screw that the lids have. So if you've got that already, you've got the part to remove this. So you're gonna remove it, take note of the way it runs over the coolant line here. If you run it under the coolant line, then it can actually rub or catch on the power supply right here. So you wanna make sure you route it the exact same and it's out of the way. But now you're gonna take the screw out and tie a string to it. The reason you tie a string to it is because it's not easy to feed back through. So once you get it loose, you're gonna pull it out from right here under the machine first. Don't try dragging it from the bottom. You're gonna pull it out from right under the tube right here and just go ahead and pull it all the way out and inspect it. Okay, so I've got a power supply rigged in place. And we're gonna pretend like this one's going under the machine and you can see the burn. So this one right here is pretty substantial. There's no patching that. There's no way to try to make that work. And this burn right here is gonna keep the machine from working. It's gonna move, but you're not gonna get any laser tube because high voltage electricity or DC is like water. It's gonna take the path of least resistance. There's resistance when it goes to this tube, so when you get a short like this, it actually jumps straight over to the frame and it will no longer fire the laser. So, next thing you're gonna do, you find a burn, you're gonna pull it out from the chain guy and leave your string on it. So I'm not gonna actually pull this one out because this one already has a supply since it's my test unit. But you could see the way the wire runs under the machine from their laser and I put the power supply just setting on top to kind of simulate the same thing. So here's our here is our wire coming out from under the machine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna splice it and we have to cut it first. There's a few different models. You've got the basic, the plus, and the pro. This one right here is a pro, so it has a heat sink in the way. The basic and the plus do not have this heat sink here. So the only thing you have to be careful about is to make sure that you stay clear of the fan when you do route this high voltage wire. On the pro models, on the other hand, it's a little more difficult because you do have a sidewall here normally. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna test it first. You're gonna put your wire down here and you're gonna look at it and you're gonna have your kit, which is in this box, and the kit comes with everything. It's got the high voltage and new wire that is uh, rated for 50,000 kilovolts versus the 40,000 kilovolts of the original high voltage wire. It's also gonna come with a guard, the other side of the connector, some heat shrink, and some uh, fiberglass sheathing to help protect the old wire from rubbing on anything where you cut it. So we've seen what we've got here, and now that you've inspected it, I'm gonna show you how to install the kit. So we've got your wire here, and you want to be careful if you cut too much of the red wire off. So let's say you cut it here, and it's all the way here. It doesn't give you a lot of room to play. So you don't want to cut too much off. If anything, it's better to leave a little extra and then trim it back. But we're going to leave about probably 8 to 10 inches. We're going to go ahead and get it, and we're going to cut the wire. So the old wire, the insulation, is pretty, pretty easy to cut. So we've got to trim the insulation back to fit into the splicer. So what you do is you just kind of hold it next to it so you can see the length, mark it with your thumb. A pocket knife works really well. You can put it on there and just kind of roll it on there. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. You start feeling it cutting into the insulation. You just don't want to cut too hard because you can damage the wire. Now, once you get it, it'll pop right off. And there's the inside of the wire inside the insulation. You want to twist it just to help any of the strands from coming loose and then you're gonna get your splicer. Now this right here is the part that goes inside the splicer. We're gonna test it. You have to loosen your screw up to make sure that it'll fit in. And you're gonna go ahead and install the wire. So you see that's about right. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just wanna make sure that it bottoms out all the way and that your wire goes all the way in. Because if it doesn't meet that screw, then you're gonna have some issues. So now that we've tested that and we've got it fitted, we're gonna step back and There is some fiberglass insulation. You're gonna slide over this right here. And this is just to protect it from rubbing anything or any kind of vibration from damaging it. So this is the first part you're gonna slide on. You're just gonna slide it over the wire. And once you get the wire, just kind of push it backwards like this. And like I said, the pros, this is really important because it's right there on that heat sink and you don't want it to damage it. So we've got that there. And the next thing you're gonna do is get the rubber piece right here. This is actually, oh, I'm sorry, the heat shrink next. So you get this heat shrink. 
the heat shrink's going to slide over and you're just going to use a lighter or a heat gun to actually activate this. So you're just going to slide it over the fiberglass. Then you've got this piece of rubber. The rubber goes on next. This rubber can be a pain. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. You can actually just put the heat shrink over the tip of this. This stuff is uh, very tight on the cable and can be difficult. So you're going to add your splicer piece and it slides in. The wire just goes over it. Then the piece we just test fit and trimmed, we're going to go ahead and install that. So you're going to put it on there and you just tighten the screw. And you don't want to over tighten it because you can damage the cable, but you just want to snug it pretty good. You don't want it to come loose. So you'll just get it, turn it so it compresses down on it a little bit. Then it actually recesses inside of this plastic housing. And you just want to pull it back. Now, what I like to do with this heat shrink is slide it up over the plastic and then slide this right here, your uh, fiberglass sheath up so it actually kind of goes into it a little bit. And then you'll use your heat gun and you'll shrink this. And this will actually shrink down and hold tight on that fiberglass and it'll hold to this and it'll keep it from pulling loose and any contaminations getting in there. Now your new wire, you're gonna go ahead and feed it under the tube using the string you pulled. So you'll just go ahead and pull it through and you wanna do it in two steps. First step, you're gonna pull the string here and feed it into the chain guide. Sometimes moving the tube gantry assembly back and forth so the chain guide flexes helps get it through. Once you get it through there, you're gonna feed it under the tube. Now under the tube can be a little tricky. There are three channels under the tube. One is for your coolant line. One is just for the spacers that help do the tube alignment. And then the very forward one right here is the one that it goes in. If your wire accidentally slips over into this one, your cable will feed in and hit that and stop. And if you'll try yanking it, you'll break the string or have problems. You back up, make sure you've got it in the very forward slot so it goes under the tube. All right, so we'll say you've already pulled it through and you've already got it attached. Go ahead and put the plug on it. Once again, remember the routing. Make sure you go over the coolant line. Don't go under it so there's plenty of clearance. So what it'll look like is you'll have basically this going to the chain guide and you'll just have this section of the splicer sticking out. You'll take the two together and you'll push them together. Oh, a little plastic burr. So when the two are together, like this right here, this one right here that's on the new one, you start turning it. And when you turn it, it actually connects those two connectors that the wires are on, and it also makes a seal. There's a rubber seal in there to keep any kind of liquid from getting in there. So the splice is completely sealed from any of the gases or contaminations that go through. Now with the pros, the one thing I have found is when you run the red wire, you'll try to run it kind of under this area right here, your sheath wire, and then have it kind of going back. If it rubs on this edge, those edges can be a little sharp and it could potentially damage it. So running it under here has worked out well for me. So I've just pulled the wire out, moved it over. You can also remove the daughter board if it helps you. Just unplug everything and get it out of the way so you know you've got plenty of room to work. These kits have been, I've got several of them that I have installed that have been on there for about a year. And I've shipped some out for testers and so far everybody has been able to install them and get their machine back up and running. And this is not a temporary repair. This is considered a permanent repair. A lot of the machines out there, we've got Aeon Mirror 9s and they actually use this technology right off of their power supply so their wire is removable and replaceable. And it actually just disconnects and when it disconnects you can see the wire came up with it and slides out so the two actually join. So this is considered a permanent repair for your machine. So we'll have these kits listed and I'll have a link in the And finally, here's a picture of a splice that we performed on a Pro. You can see how it's tucked out of the way and secure. It clears the gantry, it rolls back and forth, and this machine finished up and was running great. If you have any more questions or need help, you can join the Friendliest Glowforge page on Facebook. We have over 50,000 members, sick technicians, and 17 specialists that can help you out on your machine with either your project or making a repair. And again, thanks for watching, and I'll put some links in the comment.